Hey everybody, this is Keith here of Euphoria Pictures. Welcome back to my channel. So for this video, I said I'd do a quick haul video. I have picked up some interesting releases that I want to show. Uh, I'm also going to revisit some movies that I promised that I said I would go back to after I watched them. And I've also got some uh, subscriber mail from Jason Brett, which I'm going to be opening now as well. So I'm going to show that in this video. But the first thing before we get on with this video, there's one thing I'm going to show quickly. Uh, I went to the cinema last night and I went to see this movie, uh, Moonfall. Now, I was told by a few people, uh, it's one of them movies where, you know, you shut your brain at the door and you just enjoy what's on screen. Now, I'm not going to say that in this video. What I will say is, uh, leave your will to live at the door and then watch this movie. This film is shocking. It is one of the worst films I have ever seen. Uh, Roland Emmerich, please, please stop making these movies. Uh, it's getting boring. It's getting tiresome. And uh, I just couldn't believe what I was watching with this film. Now, I thought the premise of it when I first heard about it coming out, where the moon was on a collision course where, uh, with Earth, great. I thought it would be like, uh, if anything, it was going to be a visual treat. Uh, but unfortunately, I didn't even get that with this movie. Uh, but I have to admit, when they actually get into explaining why the moon is actually on a collision cross, a course with Earth, uh, you will not believe. You will not believe what they came up with for this movie. For that, for that reason to why that's happening. Uh, it is borderline ridiculous. And going back to them, um, the visuals of this movie. Now, they're not terrible. The only problem I have with it is uh, you've kind of seen it already before with his last movie, uh, um, Independence Day Resurgence. Uh, the scene where the mothership kind of comes in. Uh, yeah, when the, yeah, when the mother, uh, kind of the mothership breaks through the atmosphere, uh, just remove that mothership, replace it with the moon, and that's exactly the, it's nearly the exact same uh, scene you're getting. So um, it's it was just a god awful movie. The cast, Patrick Wilson and Hal Berry did the best of what they had, uh, and of course, uh, Roland, being in the Roland Emmerich movie, you always have to have to have the, the comic relief character as well, and he's in there as well. Uh, this movie, I just cannot recommend it. It is. It is just crazy. It's so poor. Uh, I don't know what else to say about it. Um, just be warned. Uh, even on a visual standpoint, it's a it's a poor film. So um, this film here, the next film I'm going to be showing now is I was called out by John Clancy, my good friend John Clancy. Uh, he did a review on this movie last week. Uh, he done an unbelievable video, which I'm going to leave a link in the description below. Go over and check it out. But in this video, he asked me to check out the transfer on this movie. And, of course, when John asked me to do something, I'm going to do it. So uh, I did watch it last week. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to quickly quickly share my thoughts on it. So we have Dune. So the first thing I will say about the film itself, look, I, I really enjoyed it. I really, really did. Is it the best thing I've ever seen? Absolutely not. But uh, I really, I was really surprised by it. Put it that way. I didn't expect, I wasn't expecting a whole lot from it. If I'm being totally honest. Uh, yes, it does drag on on certain bits, particularly its last half hour of the movie. I thought it dragged on uh, a bit too much. Uh, the end, it does have an abrupt ending, but in all fairness, it's no more abrupt than any Lord of the Rings movie that you've seen. So uh, it, it kind of keeps it set you up nicely as well for its next. I think it's two sequels that's coming. So uh, yeah, quite excited. Uh, the cast in this movie is absolutely fantastic. Rebecca Ferguson being a standout for me. I thought she was absolutely amazing in this movie. And uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing where they're going to take it. So uh, the transfer in this movie, um, look, it's it's borderline reference quality. Only for a handful of wide shots that look very soft, I would have given it top marks. It really does look that good. Uh, it's not the most colourful film you'll ever see. Look, it's it's all sand dunes. And then if it's not sand dunes, it's nothing but pure blackness, black, dark nothingness. And... Uh, so yes, it's not the it's not the most uh, like I said vibrant picture you will ever see, uh, but um, I have to admit the HDR did a good job in this. Now John Clancy, when he reviewed this, he, he was basically saying that um, he was basically saying that the the when the scenes went dark, they went so dark that he could not make out anything on screen. Now I know exactly what he's talking about, and I know exactly the scenes that he's talking about. One in particular comes to mind is when the first initial attack attack in this movie, where the shields are down. And uh, it is unbelievably dark looking. But I have to admit, I think it really adds to the, when the explosions and that start going off. Uh, I just take it, I think it just adds, adds to the splendor of how great them explosions look. 
Uh, but I kind of understand what John is saying about the, the black, the, the darkness as well. Now, he was particularly talking about the last 20 minutes of the movie when you get to see the worm for the first time. Now, he said that he could, all detail was lost in this worm. Uh, when I seen it now, it is very dark, really, really dark. But I have to admit, I still could make out every bit of detail on the picture. I had no problems on my TV. So, um, I don't know what to tell you, John. Um, the black levels looked absolutely extraordinary on this disc. Uh, granted, I know what you're trying to say, that they were a bit overly dark. But, um, like I said, I've lo no detail was lost uh, on my end. So, uh, yes, it's a borderline reference, uh, this for me. And uh, the Dolby Atmos in this is just absolutely on another level. Uh, the music score in this, wow, it just shakes the room out of it. It is unbelievable. Uh, so yes, it's a, it's a borderline reference disc, folks. Uh, you know, you have nothing to worry about with this 4K transfer. Trust me, uh, what's on show looks truly amazing. So uh, yeah, that is Dune. Right, another film here I'm revisiting. I only just got, or got around to watching it, finally. Uh, we've got Dirty Dancing on 4K. Uh, I have to admit, I was very disappointed with this transfer. Um, it was... I think they tried two attempts on Blu-ray where you had the 20th anniversary and then maybe the 25th anniversary. Now, the 20th anniversary looked absolutely one of the worst uh, transfers you'll ever see on the Blu-ray format. And then I think it was the 25th anniversary. It might have been the 30th. I can't remember. But um, they slightly improved the picture. It looked a bit better. And again, something similar with this release. Uh, it's a slight improvement over that last one. Uh, now, the thing I will say about this movie is, is people are going to be a bit confused when they do look at this movie. There is a serious amount of soft scenes in this movie. And, you know, if you had the first Blu-ray that came out, there was a lot of artificial sharpening that was used on that picture. So, some people will actually look at this transfer and go, you know what, the Blu-ray actually looked a hell of a lot sharper. But um, when you kind of peel back the layers, you'll realise that this, this, this one does look so much better. Uh, especially when that artificial sharpening has been removed. But um, yeah, look, it's it's the best they can get out of this movie, unfortunately. Um, and I think it's probably the best the film is ever going to look, even though I was completely underwhelmed by it. The Dolby Vision does add a lot to it. Uh, you'll notice even at the first opening ten, five minutes of this movie, uh, when they actually get to the, the resort, uh, the colours look unbelievably bold and uh, incredibly vibrant as well. But um, yeah, you just can't ignore them soft scenes as well, which is a real shame. Uh, this had a 5.1 DTS audio as well, where over in the States it did have Dolby Atmos. And I have to admit, the 5.1 sounded perfect. It, well, not perfect, it sounded great. But I can only imagine what the Atmos must sound like. Uh, and hopefully someday I will be able to get the uh, American edition of that and hear the film in Dolby Atmos. Because I say it would sound... I say a lot of the, the, the score of this film would sound amazing in Atmos. So um, so yeah, folks, that is Dirty Dancing. A bit of a letdown on the transfer, if I'm being totally honest. Uh, right, that brings me up to this one here. I only just done a video on this a couple of days ago, but I finally got to watch it. Uh, we have got Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. Now, I've said everything that I needed to say about the transfer on this movie, uh, which I will leave a link in the description below if you want to check it out. Uh, I I was very happy, to put it, put it that way. But I have watched the movie now. Now, a lot of people in that uh, when I put that video out said that this film was just absolutely uh, shocking. Now, I've watched it. Uh, it's nothing near as bad as what people were making it out to be. But having said that, it's still a very poor movie. Uh, it really, really is. Um... It's too, I was going to say too bloatish, but the thing about this movie is it does. It takes nearly four, it's an hour and a half movie, and they're basing this movie over two video games, which is just ridiculous. Uh, it should have just, they should have just focused on the mansion, focus on the first game, and then work our way into Raccoon City with a sequel. But uh, uh, I was going to say that the film was too bloated, but it really, really wasn't. Uh, the first 40 minutes of this was nothing really happened, com to be completely honest. And I know what you're thinking, character building. But uh, they, they actually screwed that up as well. Uh, you will not give a shit about nearly every character uh, in this movie. I thought that some of the characters were completely miscast. Uh, Albert Wesker in particular, Jill Valentine as well. Um, just didn't didn't give a shit about any of their characters to be completely honest um and uh, they were poorly portrayed if i'm being completely honest but the fella that sh they got to play leon kennedy uh i do not know what the director was thinking getting this fella to play leon kennedy uh he is so clumsy in the film uh it's he's a, it's a complete departure 
from the Leon Kennedy that we know from the video games and uh, I just didn't take to him at all. Um, the zombies in this film look like just people that escape from a mental institution. They're just they're just bald and that's it. It's, there's nothing to it. Um, the visual effects are absolutely shocking. <laughs> um, it, it, the film is too optimistic for a 20 million budget, put it that way. That's the best way to say it. Like, does uh, the, the dogs in it, there's only one scene with one of the dogs in it, there's only one scene with a liquor in it, and it's very, very quick, they're brief as well. But having said that, I still got a certain amount of enjoyment from the movie, but again, like I said, it's a poor, poor film, and uh, I don't think I'll be in a rush to watch it again now. So that's uh, Resident Evil, uh, Welcome to Raccoon City. Right, so up next we have, uh, uh, this is an absolute amazing film now, I've done an unboxing of this there a couple of weeks back and I finally got to watch this as well. So we have Collateral on 4K, uh, definitely my favourite Michael Mann movie, uh, Jamie Foxx and Tom Cruise is just, uh, particularly Tom Cruise, is unbelievable in this movie. Now I know uh, Jamie Foxx got an Oscar for this, but I have to admit I still think Tom Cruise was the better of the two uh, when watching this movie. I think Tom Cruise is very... Um, He's just, he leaves me very unsettled when I watch him on this. You just don't know what he's going to do. And uh, I thought he did a great job with it. Now, unfortunately, the 4K transfer in this film was a bit of a letdown. The film is incredibly dark, I will say that. But uh, the black levels in this just didn't look that great. They looked a bit greyed out, in my opinion. Uh, and it just didn't... The, the picture kind of sometimes looked a bit unnatural as well. And, uh, yeah, it's very hard to recommend this one, unfortunately, folks. Um... You're just not going to get a whole lot from it, uh, especially if you do have the Blu-ray. So uh, if you do have it, just stick with your Blu-ray because you're not getting much of an upgrade uh, over the uh, yeah the Blu-ray itself. It does have a DTS 5.1 audio as well, and it was fine. Uh, no complaints whatsoever. Um, I don't think it really needed an Atmos soundtrack, if I'm being completely honest. So um, a bit of a letdown in the film. I'm. It's one of them films, look, I'm happy. It's probably the best I, it's ever looked. And I'm happy to have it, but um, like I said, if you do have that Blu-ray, you're probably better off sticking with it. So, uh, yeah, that is collateral. Uh, right, so up next, uh, I picked up uh, The Expendables on 4K. Uh, look, I don't have to talk about this movie. It's just your typical over, <laughs> uh, what you call it, uh, over-the-top action movie. Uh, it has just got some of the be best, uh, the biggest names, uh, action names uh, in Hollywood in this movie. And uh, it was just an absolute fun uh, revisit for this movie. I just really, really enjoyed it. I always liked it. I liked the first two. The third one, I, yeah, I, I didn't like it at all now, to be honest. And I didn't actually buy it in 4K. But uh, I watched this anyway, and the 4K transfer is good. It looks it looks great. Uh, it's a, it's not what I call a night and day difference over the Blu-ray itself. But it's 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 a subtle upgrade. And uh, you will definitely appreciate the, the upgrades that you will see on this. Uh, it doesn't have Dolby Vision, it's got HDR, and the colours do look great. Uh, some scenes can be particularly dark. Some of the CGI uh, in this movie, though, is really badly showed up on this 4K release. Uh, you know, this, this CGI blood, it just looks, it looks absolutely terrible. And some of the flames and the fires at the end of this movie, uh, it just looks unbelievably fake. And they, they never looked that great anyway. They were, like, you know, CGI flames. Uh, it's just ridiculous. But uh, I think the kind of the HDR makes them even worse now. But um, it's still a it is a decent upgrade over the previous Blu-ray. And if you are a fan of this movie, uh, do check it out. Uh, the Dolby Atmos on it is um, it's one of them yokes, uh, one of them uh, um, tr soundtracks where uh, you're near borderline deaf <laughs> at the end of the movie, particularly the last uh, half an hour of this movie. Wow, uh, it is just bombastic and it sounds amazing. And uh, yeah, I'm happy I did pick it up, even though, the, again, the 4K is fine. It's just, uh, it's not a huge upgrade uh, over the pre previous Blu-ray. So that takes me on to Expendables 2. Now, I'm very, it's so strange. I don't understand how you can make the Expendables on 4K and make it a subtle upgrade over the previous Blu-ray and then bring this one out and make it almost worse than the previous Blu-ray. Uh, there is nothing to be had with this 4K transfer. Um, it just looks identical. Identical might even be a little bit worse than the previous blu-ray uh, Just some scenes in the, the, this film the grain looks unbelievably heavy uh, Can be very very distracting 
and uh, the colours are very lifeless, if I'm being completely honest. So uh, this film was a bit of a disappointment, even though I do love the film itself. Uh, I think it's probably the best Expendables movie, uh, and they got a lot more in this movie. They got the likes of Swatsy, they got has a more uh, bigger role in this along with Bruce Willis you got Van Damme as the villain uh, you got the good old Chuck Norris as well that appears in this and I have to admit Chuck Norris's cameo, cameo in this film is uh, quite brilliant but uh, the transfer is an, a huge huge letdown and there's something very wrong with the colour grading on this it just looks very unnatural uh, but thankfully it does have a Dolby Atmos soundtrack and just exactly like the original uh, the, the original Expendables uh, the sound just sounds amazing in Dolby Atmos, uh, particularly the opening sequence and its end sequence. Uh, again, just bombastic and uh, every one of your speakers are going to get a good old test, uh, particularly with these two movies. So uh, yeah, if you do have the pre previous Blu-ray uh, Blu on this one, uh, the transfer is it actually probably better. So uh, I would recommend sticking with it unless you want to get a Dolby Atmos soundtrack where you get with this one. So uh, yeah, I'll have to leave it to you to decide. Right, my last pickup for this haul, and uh, this was a surprise, well, not a surprise. I knew I was going to enjoy it, just not to this extent. So we've got uh, Last Night in Soho. Uh, Edgar Wright, my God, what a director he really is. Um, he has not made a bad film in my eyes. Uh, I thought Baby Driver before this was absolutely incredible, and I need to revisit that movie. Uh, the two girls in this movie, uh, Thomas and Mackenzie and Anne Taylor-Joy, uh, they carried this movie so, so well. Uh, there is a scene in it, I'm going to go back to Tom, Cla uh, um, my good friend John Clancy, sorry, he reviewed this movie as well. And there's a scene in it, this dance sequence. And when you do watch it, you, th you just think it was just shot digitally, it was like CGI to death. But um, I actually found out tr tr through uh, John's video that the whole scene was completely rehearsed. And uh, it's just a testament to how good of a director uh, Edgar Wright is when you do watch that scene and how brilliant it actually looks. Uh, truly blown away by it. And just like Edgar Wright's previous movies, uh, it's a very heavily influenced by music as well. And uh, the soundtrack in this film is absolutely amazing. Uh, it is one of them movies that you will watch it and go, oh, I can see where they're going with this. Trust me, folks, you do not know where they're going with this. Uh, I did not see uh, this ending coming. I was really, really surprised by it. And uh, yeah, it was just an absolute uh, incredible movie. Uh, the transfer itself is, it has a 2K DI, uh, which is a bit of a surprise. I thought it would have had a 4K DI. And I think which, uh, just like a lot of 2K DI movies, uh, I think it's the it's the HDR or the Dolby Vision that's king. Uh, so the colours are king. It's the colours that you're, you're going to see the huge upgrade on. And with my eyes, and I don't know if it was just me, but I found that when they went back to the 60s, the picture just seemed to be... It just looked a hell of a lot better. I don't know why it was. Maybe it's just the, the colours just looked a bit more vibrant. I don't know what it was. But I always found that, yeah, when they went to the 60s, it just the picture kind of just went up a level or two. But having said that, the picture does look absolutely amazing. And uh, trust me, you are going to love... It's not what I call a huge uh, difference over the Blu-ray. But I think, that, again, when you see the colours in it, uh, you're getting a monster upgrade. Uh, it does have a Dolby Atmos soundtrack and it sounds unbelievable as well. Uh, as it, as expected when it comes to a film that's kind of um, you know heavily music musically inf influenced and uh, it's, it does exactly what you want uh, when it comes to sound. So uh, yeah, last night in Soho. If you haven't checked it out, definitely worth checking out. Um, it's such a great it's a great movie and uh, yeah, happy that I actually checked it out. So uh, the last thing I'm going to show is uh, we have got subscriber mail uh, from my good friend uh, Jason Bresh. Now, I have pre-opened this. I haven't actually looked in uh, to what uh, he sent me, but it uh, definitely feels like a movie. So I'm going to open this up properly now, and we'll have a look and see what he sent me. So, uh, one second. <laughs> wow. Uh, that is unbelievable. Wow, wow, wow. He has sent me the jungle book, the steel book of it. Now, Jason actually done a video around two weeks ago and he picked this movie up on Steelbook and I left a comment in it saying that um, I thought it was one of the nicest looking Steelbooks I've ever seen. Uh, I thought it looked absolutely beautiful. Uh, the artwork is stunning on it. And uh, he has just sent it to me. That is unbelievable. Uh, let me just quickly take his around the Steelbook and just show you uh, when you open it. It just looks extraordinary. Look at that. Isn't that absolutely amazing? Uh, I'm blown away, Jason. That is, that is incredible. And this is a 3D, a 3D edition as well. Now, I did have the film on 3D already. Actually, I have it on 4K as well. 
but uh, I always wanted the steel book, uh, especially when Jason showed it off. Uh, I thought it looked absolutely stunning. So Jason, that is that is absolutely incredible. I really am blown away by this. It's definitely one of the nicest uh, steel books I've ever seen, and uh, yeah. This this is gonna find a good gun to home. So thank you so much for that, Jason. I really do appreciate it. So that is it, folks. That is everything for this video. Uh, I had a few things to show. Uh, hopefully, I got through them uh, quickly enough. So uh, yeah, that's it. So as per usual, if you did like this video, folks, please do give us a thumbs up. And if you could do, leave a comment down below and uh, let me know your thoughts on some of these movies. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you all again real soon with my next video. So take care, folks out there. Stay safe. Bye bye.